Charles McCain, political co-director of the San Diego Democratic Club. Thanks for being here, Charles. We appreciate Thank it. You. Um, our topic of this time is uh, national, the National Democratic Convention in New York. Um, what's the club's role? What's going to go on at the convention? What are you looking forward to? What are you not looking forward to? Well, uh, this year, 1992, San Diego Democratic Club has succeeded in electing uh, five openly gay and lesbian delegates to the National Democratic Convention. Uh, we have done this in the past, 1980, 1984, and 1988. We've sent four delegates during uh, those years. This time, um, we've had uh, great success in getting five people onto the uh, delegation. Now that's uh, five people out of about 20 to 25 in San Diego County. So the purpose of this is to uh, get uh, gay and lesbian uh, Democrats from all over the country together in New York and to create a sense of national community. So often we feel isolated from one another and this gives us a chance to come together into a coherent uh, national body for a uh, convention week and then to build on that after the convention. Also, it's a chance for us to uh, put before the uh, public through the uh, convention the importance of our issues. Uh, gay and lesbian uh, federal civil rights bill, the uh, need to uh, end the military's discrimination against uh, gay people, and uh, the need to have a comprehensive uh, federal approach to the AIDS uh, crisis. How organized is the club in terms of national cohesiveness that you just spoke of with other Democratic clubs across the country? Well, there are uh, there is a national uh, organization of gay and lesbian Democratic clubs that of which we have uh, been a member in the past, and there is a coordinated effort by the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and the Human Rights Campaign Funds to fund to identify the uh, gay and lesbian delegates at the uh, Democratic Convention and the Republican Convention, if there are any there. But the Democratic conventions in the past, we've had in the last four conventions, uh, 80 to 100 people who identify themselves as gays and, de and lesbians. And then this will enable us to meet together as a caucus there to uh, have the candidates or the candidates' campaign staff come to us and hear what uh, we feel about their candidates, what issues are important to us, and what we uh, want to see the candidates uh, do on our issue. Have you yourself been to any of the conventions? I attended the convention in 1980, oh, so good. this will be my here's, second. Here's a question yeah. that, you, that you should have no trouble with. We know what we see on the Nash, three big TV, TV networks about what goes on there. What goes on the floor? What goes on in the in the crowds that we don't see? Well, I can give you an example of two things we did in 1980. Uh, at that time, the Equal Rights Amendment was uh, still out before the states for ratification, and uh, there had not been much movement on that. And the convention uh, supported it, but we there were a group of people, feminists and uh, gays and lesbians, and uh, you know, widespread group of delegates who wanted the convention to address it directly. So. We did have a floor demonstration at that time that uh, made the podium take notice that uh, hundreds of delegates were uh, walking around uh, with signs and chanting in support of the uh, Equal Rights Amendment. Also, last time in, 19, or in 1980, uh, the Gay and Lesbian Caucus was able to secure enough signatures from delegates all over the country, something like 500 signatures, to nominate a uh, black African-American man from uh, Washington, D.C. as the vice president, and that allowed him time on the podium to address the full convention about uh, issues important to us. Those issues being? Well, uh, again, this time I think the priority issues are the uh, federal uh, gay and lesbian civil rights bill to extend uh, non-discriminatory uh, protection to uh, people in um, housing, employment, public accommodations without regard to sexual orientation. And the, the, I think to end this uh, spectacle that we've been seeing recently of the military discharging people who have been decorated for their service in the wars and their service to the country through the military and then discharging them simply because they are gay without regard to their uh, good performance record, that I think will be a priority issue. And then um, Governor Clinton has uh, said that he will uh, have a person with, living with HIV address the convention. So I, the uh, Gay and Lesbian Caucus will be uh, working with the Clinton campaign on uh, 
deciding who that person will be. We also want to have a unopenly gay and les or lesbian person uh, address the convention uh, on the uh, important gay and lesbian issues. So we're working on that. There will also be demonstrations outside the convention on a variety of issues, in including uh, uh, gay rights uh, agendas and also uh, AIDS issues. And we want to coordinate inside with the uh, people outside, if necessary, to uh, demonstrate inside, depending on how the uh, convention proceeds. Now, sad as it may be, it's unfortunately uh, becoming more and more factual articles that we're reading, things we're hearing, uh, gay rights discrimination bills and the like being voted down, being rescinded, being withdrawn across the country. Um, questions, comments, thoughts well, on that? I think uh, in the last uh, 20 years we've seen a lot of movement towards uh, legal equality for gays and lesbians throughout the country, various cities, various states, and uh, the, some uh, portions of the federal government and I think the progress has been steady there have been a few uh, at all at all times that you go a few steps forward maybe one step backwards and I think we're seeing some the reaction. the reaction and the opposition is a result of the successes we have uh, been experiencing they just creates a backlash and I think that's uh, part of the political process that's always been probably always will be but I think it, the more that uh, people see that uh, we are you know, citizens, we are workers, we are taxpayers, we're everywhere in the country with education. I believe that uh, we, our movement will uh, continue to uh, get progress. Thanks, I Charlie. I wonder if I could ask you one thing. Uh, I saw recently where Roberta Actenberg, the openly lesbian um, supervisor in San Francisco, was is on the platform committee for the National Democratic Party. And you, you were talking about the agenda that's going to be taking the organizing on the floor and in the convention process that's going to be organizing around the gay agenda, gay and lesbian agenda. What's her, her role on the platform uh, committee? Will she be able to insert uh, you know, language about gays and lesbians in the military or the discrimination bill that will help us? Yes, I, I think that was, will be her role. Uh, she has been uh, well, one of her chances are. <laughs> well, I, I think they're pretty good because uh, uh, Bill Clinton has uh, spoken to uh, gay and lesbian groups and has pledged to end the discrimination in the military and to uh, try to bring about uh, legal equality, work towards that. Uh, Roberta Actenberg has been on his uh, statewide steering committee for the Clinton mm -hmm. campaign. Also, uh, Carol Migdon, who's an, another openly uh, lesbian supervisor in San Francisco, has been appointed to the platform committee, and she has been the uh, chair of the California Democratic uh, Party platform committee for a uh, number of years, and many of the uh, portions of that platform dealing with non-discrimination will be uh, included. All right. We'll be back, in fact, with uh, Chris in just a moment.